It's not easily ignited. There we go. I had to do three or four different sparks. Well, that's getting out of hand. So, like in camp, we do that. Usually a bucket, but we have water uh, jugs. And then we have shovels around, and there's lots of dirt. So that's the first stage, is being able to fight it. Second stage is prepping. So I make sure I don't have flammable things. Usually a three foot area, I'll scrape back all the, the ground litter, especially if it's windy, like this weekend, or dry. And we move all this stuff back so we have plenty of space uh, in case sparks pop out, depending on the type of wood you're using and burning. The next thing I'll, I'll prepare to uh, build. So I have uh, three basic sizes of uh, firewood. So we have uh, tinder and kindling. Kindling is going to range, range anywhere from pencil or less, like really thin is good, and you can snap this off the pine trees. And then think uh, like thick Sharpie marker or dry erase marker. So somewhere in that range is kindling. You can also split kindling. And then the larger sizes are fuel, and the smaller uh, parts that actually catch the flame is called tinder. It's very difficult to make tinder. That's not very difficult. It's, it's more difficult than you think to find good tinder in the woods, something that would catch a spark and then uh, turn into a flame. So I always recommend you just carry tinder with you, and then you wouldn't have to search for it. So there's a couple things you can do. Super cheap is just get cotton balls and soak them in Vaseline. We call them, I call them fire boogers because that's what they feel like. But they're, they're nasty. Like they're, they're slippery and slimy. And they don't, you gotta keep them in a bag or something. You can't just throw them in your pocket. Other types of tinder are just some leftover gauze from UV. When we were doing the, the UV kids, we did the first aid class. I got a bunch of gauze left over. So I could, I could put some Vaseline. I've done that before. I'll put a big glob of Vaseline there and then roll this thing up. And then it's like a, a jelly donut of fire starting. And then you can dip it in wax, put it in your plastic bag. Lots of ways you can use that tinder. And tinder is anything that will catch a spark. You can carry around some jute twine, right? Because you can take the jute twine apart. And just fluff that up and make a little hairball out of it that'll catch a spark. You can do the same thing with dried grass. George, where's one of them hairball or grass balls you collected? Do you still have those? Yeah. So this is a good natural tinder bundle, uh, appropriately called a bird nest, just made out of dry grass. It was wet this morning, but we collected a bunch of it and stuffed it in George's pocket, and his body heat dried it out as he walked around. And you just you want lots of little pieces that'll catch a spark. So I just tuck it in with my thumbs and keep doing that and I make like literally a bird nest out of it. And that'll catch a spark and then I can use my tinder, kindling, and then the fuel later. So I don't have to worry about that right now. There are little um, modern or man-made, this is a little fire cube from Espit. It's a little alcohol block. You peel the tin foil back, light it. It's like a little block of alcohol and something else, I forget. But you put that in your little stove and that'll burn for about seven to nine minutes, enough to boil a cup of water. So that's good to have. My favorite, well, I have some others that are flat discs, oh, yeah. but these are from Bigfoot Bushcraft. I like these, they're a little kerosene and, I think it's kerosene. There's an accelerant and wax in these compressed cotton plugs. And I just grab a handful of those and put them in my pocket or my fire pouch or the little bag. I usually carry a little tin or I have one of these in my wallet I carry or in my bag. It's not a hard text, it's just a cramp. What? Bang. All right, so those are, those are good. You can split those with a knife and fluff out the, the cotton to catch a spark. And then you're ready. So always have some tinder on you. Candles. Oh yeah, I'm into that. Always have some tinder ready so you don't have to deal with trying to find a natural tinder source. And then there's lots of ways to make. Bonnie said like the one she dips in the baby bell cheese wax, and you can make them in uh, um, 
chain egg carton. made them in the egg carton with wax and wood chips. It's all. Oh, I thought you did this. Didn't George make us some fire stars for Christmas last year? He made candles. Candles. Yeah, George made candles. I forgot who made the fire bombs. I like these just for convenience because I can throw these just in my pocket. It doesn't matter if there's nothing special about them. They're easy. They're small. They're convenient. And then in my fire tinder uh, kit, my tinder kit, I keep a couple of other things. Flame extenders. So I like to keep a little chunk of fat wood. This is that resinous wood that's impregnated with those oils. And you just, you're going to make a little scrape pile. So that can serve as tinder and as fire extender. And sometimes just birthday candles. If you get a little bit of a flame going, get that candle lit, then you can set that down. You've got time to build your, your fire. And I'll show you how to do some of that. One of the things I can do with this fat just wood. Put, just put the candle in the middle of the bridge there. I could do that, yeah. All right, let's see. So I can use the back of my knife and I can scrape. You guys can see those little curls that come off that fat wood. See the little curls that come off? I wouldn't do this technique on a day like today because of the wind, but I could lay my... Then do it. Use you want me to do it? Up this way. Oh, the edge? Yeah. The blade? Well, no, I'm going to... That just cut it up. Yeah, yeah so I'm what I'm doing... I can use my edge, but I don't want to have to keep sharpening my knife and peeling those off. So if I use this, I can scrape those corners. It's going to be way too windy for this, but I'll try it. See them little piles? Now that little pile, those shavings of that waxy wood that's resinous would catch a spark. So I could get a pile of those. Works real good for YouTube videos. Doesn't work real good in real life, in my experience, because the wind blows the piles everywhere. You can get a little block of magnesium and scrape that as well. I brought some uh, regular wood. Oh, I did bring the magnesium. I brought some regular wood blocks so you guys could practice using your knives to make little piles of fire dust. You'll see how frustrating it is. You could also use the magnesium block and make little magnesium shavings in my bird nest. Burns really hot. So I can use one of these tinders. Uh, there's different ones you guys can use and or fire extenders. And I want something that'll catch a spark. And then I gotta build, get the fire ready because so the wind is there. A lot of times I'll build a big pile of kindling, like a V, like this, or I'll take a big loose mass of it like I did last night and I just set it over top of the flame because it's wet and I let it dry out and then catch on fire. And then I can do this and I can kind of build up, up and up and up and meet a little, get a little oven with the sticks, like up like this, if that makes sense. I don't want to start a ton of little fires, so I'm just going to show you guys that. So where do you get your sparks or flames from? There's a couple different ways to do that. A lighter. I suggest you have at least three ways on you to start fires for an emergency. I carry this one and use it most of the time. It's just a, it's just a lighter, cheap lighter, but it's in a little X attack case. And I've got my whistle on it, a little shot cord, so I don't lose it. So this way, I've got flame right away. And you can use the lighter and the other parts to catch a spark if you run out of fluid or if it gets wet. Secondarily, I carry one of these. This is a ferrocerium rod. And this has got um, little ferrous metal, so if you scrape it fast enough, it'll actually ignite and cause a spark. These are great. Do it. It's easy. I will. And then this one is a small little ferrocerium rod with a ceramic scraper. I got this from Wazoo. Survival gear, I like these. Because then I can wear it, and if worse comes to worst, I always have a fire starter on me. And then I always have one or two of those tinders, tinder bundles in my pocket somewhere, or in my tinder pouch in the winter. And then I have another little ferro rod in a wallet. So the ferro rods throw sparks when I scrape it up. But that the spark's no good. I can't start a fire like that by getting a... Just at that. I can't get a pile of wood and go. <laughs> It'll never work. So I have to have something. Keep doing that and getting no, angry. Fine. Right, so I have to have something that'll start. So there's a couple different methods. You I can grab that grass. There's a couple different methods. I can do that. But I'm just throwing sparks. 
they're not going anywhere. And if I'm doing this with my knife, I might knock my tinder bundle everywhere that I carefully set up. <laughs> so I like to brace this down with my hand and pull my fire steel away. It's the same, it's the same action. That way I'm not knocking, especially if it's windy, it's cold, I'm tired. You're not lighting it. Oh, I know. I don't want to knock my tinder bundle over, especially if I've set up all my my kindling around it. Now this grass is pretty dry, but you'll see it's not, it's not easily ignited. There we go. I had to do three or four different sparks. Well, that's getting out of hand. Seem to be getting out of hand. So it's good to have some kind of tinder bundle. Now you see that dry grass went up. I'll show you how easily these disgusting fire boogers go. <laughs> they're not disgusting. Oh, they're disgusting. So I open it up and I peel the outer sticky layers open and I find some of that dry cotton. Set that down on that little bundle. They're just one strike and that's going to flame up like crazy. If I can aim, George. Like that. And now... It's out of control. <laughs> it's out of control. The fire boogers are my favorite. They're the most consistent. Yeah, and, and, reliable. Gonna, and they'll go. So. Yep. I'm pretty, so, I'm pretty sure you're going to start a forest fire. You would, you would think so. Nobody's good enough tonight. Okay, so that's the fire booger. Do you see the fire burger is still there right there? Yeah, we can use that again. We'll save that for later, George. Um, what was I going to show you next about that? Fire. George, my, my pants are bent. Totally not. I'm going to Oh, I was going to show you another method to light things. So if you have to get a lot of flame uh, sparks, mm -hmm. so you can you can do this if you have a fire burger. It catches a spark and goes. Or I can brace and pull this back. Or if I wanted to start something like maybe this is kind of wet, I can scrape down a few times and get a few ferrocerium curls down there. So I'm not going fast. Now I've made little little shards of that ferrocerium down there. And then I can run this down a few times faster. See all the little sparks as the ferrocerium catches? Those are the ferrocerium? That doesn't make yep. any difference. It just looks... No, you can see the little sparks because I shaved a pile. If I wanted to shave a big pile, I'd get a better result with my, my scraping. Could so, you make an explosion? Can you make an explosion with that? Uh, nope. So you, if I threw that in there. See, it won't catch fire. It's the little scraping of the pieces off. When you shave them off, it causes a little bit of a, a chemical reaction. It heats up so quick as the bonds break and they ignite. So, you, so it's safe. And if it's... You just, if you just grated a whole bunch of that up, made a giant pile, and then would die, but it would blow up. Yeah, it can be a little concussive, but you wouldn't want to do too much of that. Uh, these things are waterproof. They're they're safe. How is that still burning? They're not explosive. Uh, the only problem is they're it's a little it's a little heavy if you're really worried about weight. How is that still going? It's magic. So, <laughs> I prefer to carry the lighter, and if you were at the craft last time, we put a bunch of that candle wicking on there. So just like the birthday candle, I can light the wick on that and use that long enough for a flame extender to get some things kind of burning. You can use that later. Put it out. Here are some old-fashioned style options. So besides these little lighters with the candle wick, the uh, duct tape and the little cord, we made those. You carry, get yourself a whole little fire kit where you've got three or di four different methods. Um, matches are fine. The problem with matches, unless you have the strike anywhere matches. I did see a clever little hack where it... Strike, strike them on your finger now. The guy put these together, tied a little, um, a little bundle together like this with candle wicking, and then dipped them in the Baby Bell cheese wax. But he had a little, uh, he wrapped the striker around the heads and then wrapped that with a little pull, a little pull tab. So the whole thing was gooed in wax and he ripped it apart and the strikers lit all the matches and burned the wax. It was pretty neat. This sounds so fun. But I don't really, I haven't carried matches since I was probably 14 for Boy Scouts. There's lots of ways to carry them, but I prefer the lighter. I smell it. With some kind of tinder I'm trapped on there. Like even this duct tape or gorilla tape.
Yeah, this stuff is flammable. So you can use the tape. Oh, now it's stuck to me burning. So you can even use the tape and set that on fire with your lighter. Just smoldered. <laughs> it's not as environmentally friendly as the grass, but it does work. And you can use it for other applications as well. You got the candle wick on there, so I have the lighter. If the lighter doesn't work, I would keep my ferrocerium rod in my backpack. So I have that as well. And then in an emergency, I have one on my body. The two fire methods on my body and a backup or a third one in my pack. And then I always have uh, a lot of different tinder options with me because I hate trying to search for dry grass or things that will catch sparks. Why we did that this morning? Yeah, it's just a little... Yep, just a little bit of work. Thanks, Henry. So here's what you guys can practice is shaving uh, the fat wood. I don't want to use up the fat wood. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about char cloth. You got any in there? Yeah, I think so. So here's another thing. Mark's got these little bitty pieces of black cloth. It's charred cotton. These will catch a spark really well. These work best if you're using a flint and steel. Uh, or a bow drill, but I'm not doing the, the primitive starting. That'd be like at a 202. So making char cloth is easy. As long as you got your fire going, you take your tin, got a little hole punched in it, put up some uh, dry cotton in there, and you put it in the fire, <clears throat> and it'll smolder and char in there. You can't catch flame because it's not getting enough oxygen through the hole. But you'll see the smoke or steam coming out. And then after that stops coming out, you know it's charred. You can pull that aside, let it cool. And then you can open up and you've got char cloth. To each fire you start with char cloth, make some more. Don't pull it out and open it because the fresh supply of air can actually combust and then it'll burn up once you open it. So that's a more for the primitive method. You guys can practice using the back of your knife and you make these little these little scraping piles. And now light it. Now it's going back like a giant. Well, this is not fat wood, just regular wood to practice on, but once I've got that little blossom of curls, we can set that down there. And then, I don't know, George, I don't know if that's going to catch a, catch a spark, buddy. Here, let's do it on the, the grass. And then I can pin that down with my ferro rod. Oh, it worked. Good call. I know. All right. Yeah, that's like how I put it. A giant fire, you get like a giant. So I've got uh, the different lighters, some of the little wood shavings to try, some boogers, and you guys can take turns with the ferro rod, and the different types of um, tinder to try to get a fire going. Don't have to build the fire up, just try to get some tinder going and maybe a couple sticks and see what you can do with that. Give you a bit of, a little and then next time we'll use flint and steel or a piece of chert like the flint rock. Uh, and if you have a high carbon a knife you can use the spine of your knife to get sparks off into that char cloth or you can make the bow drill set which everybody loves but it is not the best for missions. 